Hello everybody, welcome to the next episode in our introductory series. This time we are going to talk about behavior. We've already covered structure, so we know that in structure you define concepts out of which programs can be built. Uh, then we talked about constraints, which is the place where you can further restrict the shape of the AST that's built out of your concept. The last aspect that somehow defines the aspect of your language is behavior. In behavior, just like in object-oriented programming, be in behavior you define methods for your concept. So functionality that will be attached to your concept and that can be then invoked on nodes of the corresponding concept. So let's open abstract command first. If you want to open something quickly, hit Control n or Command n and then you just type the name of the node that you want to open. So abstract, abstract command is what I want. Okay, so this is a super concept for many concepts used in the in the robot language. So perhaps that's, that's a good place where I could create some uh, methods that then would be inherited by the extending concept. So uh, for this concept I create new behavior aspect. So this is the place where I can define functionality for abstract command. I've got a constructor in which I can um, set some properties, attributes or whatever before the node gets even inserted into the model. And you can always refer to the current node with, with this. So this dot and now you have all the properties and children and references that are declared on the, on the in the concept. Well, and down here you can define methods. So you can define a method foo. Now you have a method, and this is a method that can be called on nodes of this concept. You could also create static methods. So now this method can be invoked on a concept. So the distinction non-static and static here means callable on a node, callable on a concept. And the methods will be only defined on the concepts or on the nodes of a con of this concept, not on the subconcepts. If you would like to create polymorphic methods, so methods that uh, will be can be overridden on some subconcepts or nodes of subconcepts then you make them virtual. Both static and non-static methods can be made virtual. So now in the subconcepts you could override these methods and define your own functionality. So for example if I open a subconcept like if statement if statement and an if statement I create behavior now in behavior I could hit control O meaning override and I, I want to override foo for example and I could still call super foo to call the, the the method in the super concept but now I could provide my own functionality and then if someone invokes a method on a node now depending whether it's an if statement or abstract command the particular um, method will be invoked. Now I could also if I remove this and get back to my abstract command. I could make both methods abstract, so they have no default implementation, so they have to be implemented. They have to be overridden in subconcepts. Then the first difference now, if you open the concept, you see an error telling that there's some abstract, uh, sub abstract behavior method that you need to override. And now in the behavior, you may hit Control I or Command I to get the implement dialog in which you pick the methods that need to be implemented. So this gives us several options. Non-virtual and virtual methods, so poly polymorphic or non-polymorphic, and then instance and static, and now both can be also abstract. Okay, another useful thing, navigation. If you are looking at the, at the method and you would, you would be interested in knowing all the implementations of this method, you hit Control Alt B or Command Alt B, and it will show a short list of all the all, all the overriding methods. 
If there's, there is just one, like in our case, we just get there. We get to the only overriding method. And navigating back to the definition, uh, the original definition that you override, if you're looking at the overriding method, um, is just plain Control B or Command B on the reference here. So this will get us here. Now in calling methods, now for example, let's say in this foo method, I would like to first I will I will make it non-abstract. So now this is no longer abstract, so I don't need to implement it in every single command. So let's say I want to clear the I would I would like to clear the if the false branch. I've got a false branch here, which is a command list, and I would like to clear it in the in the foo method. So obviously I could directly go and clear it. But how about delegating to the delegating to the command list? So the command list here should be able to clear all the commands. So here's all the commands. So I create the behavior and here I cr create a new method of type void clear commands and this will be the body will say this commands clear so this will just clear the list of all commands and now in if statements behavior I can call this false branch clear command commands I've got a typo here After all, I have looking at the if statement. I have no idea how internally the false the the command list is being implemented, so I shouldn't touch the internals of that node, and I shouldn't know about the commands, the implementation detail. The, there is some field commands containing all the all the commands. Also, several techniques in MPS rely on behavior. For example, scoping. If you want uh, some, if you want some concepts to p add items into scope, for example, you might have a for loop, and that for loop has some local loop variable, and you would like that loop variable to be available to expressions inside the for loop. Then you have to alter the scope. So for that purpose, uh, MPS has a scope provider interface which in behavior defines several methods that you are aimed to override. They, they virtual after all. So these methods need to be implemented so that your concept can contribute new items to the scope, new variables. So now when if statement is a scope provider in the behavior we can override the appropriate method for getting scope like this one and now we can create or enrich the scope so that the, the code inside the if statement has access to some extra thing. You know, and this is this is what for loops would do, or other types of loop. In a similar way, expression from base language, which is an abstract super concept of all expressions that are defined in base language, provides several virtual methods that concrete expressions override so that they declare their behavior. You know, so they might say whether they can be on the left hand side of an assignment for example or whether they represent a compile time constant value or not. Uh, whether they can be directly uh, inserted into a statement as, as an expression statement. So in general being able to extend behavior of concepts is a very useful idea. Okay, and that is all for this episode. See you next time. Goodbye.